group of youth staged a peaceful protest in Oshogbo, the Oshun State capital, decrying the rising cost of living with a call on the government to immediately intervene earlier today. The protesters who wielded placards with inscriptions such as, quote, change the unfavorable policies, Nigerians are suffering, we can't cope again, and we are humans, stop mistreating the citizens, among others, assembled along MDS Road in Oshogbo. Despite the large presence of police operatives near the scene of the protest, the youths kept singing songs expressing the, frustra the frustration of many Nigerians occasioned by the harsh economy. Similarly, youths and women took to the streets of Mina and Kano uh, to protest what they described as the rising cost of living across the country. In Niger, a group of women blocked the ever-busy Minabida Road at the popular Pakungu roundabout and called on President Tinubu to address the problem of hunger in the land. All right, indeed, help needs to come to the way of Nigerian youths and uh, very quickly. Well, let's get a sense of things from the youths and joining me right now is the president of the National Youth Council of Nigeria, NYCN, uh, Sukubo Saraibi. Sukubo, thank you so much for joining us. Yes, I mean, uh, it's a tough one for everybody. I mean, we our holes are getting deeper uh, in our pockets. Uh, and uh, lots of young people are facing serious uh, economic crisis. Uh, they have been complaining about on, uh, the lack of money to be able to pay school fees. And uh, people say there's also no food and then the cost of living is rising. I mean, you're the president of the National Youth Council of Nigeria. How has it been from your constituents? Yes, um, thank you for having me. Akoshili Mukhtar's name, um, acting president, National Youth Council of Nigeria. Uh, yes, um, you can see that um, the country is hit up by young people. If there is supposed to be a positive change, it's supposed to be from the young people. If there is supposed to be a, neg a negative change, it's supposed to be from the young people. Uh, the freelance we are getting from few weeks is not um, encouraging. And um, you've, I'm, sure, I'm happy you've read it out and everyone is seeing the government are also listening. Uh, we are appealing because the, 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 the complaints that we have each day um, in and out is so uh, ambiguous that we don't even know where to start from. <coughs> for instance, um, for you as young people to be able to uh, even go to school as, as a student, you cannot even afford a very very a very small amount of money to to go to school for instance for you to even feed three times daily is a problem um so we are actually calling our government to uh try and bring some kind of measure to ameliorate, ameliorate the, the the current situation uh for instance last within the first period we had that they give senators reps uh foods for distribution this is not i, I would I, I can't confirm if do, those items were given to those senators but if you want to bring up such such um relief uh, material it's supposed to pass through the young people because they are the one that knows uh how how best we can actually you know get these things to our parents because some of us have very age parents and we are the one that can actually get this to them then you you bring um, transportation because the, the, if you go now before you feel your friend your 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 time you'll be spending more than 50 40 thousand in a week in one week and a half so if the if government can bring up palliative in can in in, in terms of mobility in terms of uh, price control in terms of um um even security because um uh if the one of the one of the one of the key aims one of the key things that government is supposed to provide for its citizen is um to see to secure him and if you do not have a proper uh, um if you don't have well if you don't have things to eat in your house if you, if you cannot cater for your well-being then there will be crisis so these are one of the fingers that were being pointed at in, in this insecurity we're having today so if government can really come and see to the the high price for, for instance today i understand some stores were being sealed up because of price i have i've not came to understand the purpose of that because those stores are selling what they buy and so it's not their fault if you want to get to the root of that you go and you go and do what we call the price control 
Uh, so every for instance, if you want, if you are if you are into the if, if we are going to infrastructure of price of cement today is within 10,000, 15,000. Our young people that does labor, our young people that do minimal job, they cannot go and do their daily job because people are not building, people are not doing what gives people their, um, their daily bread. So it's a very um, uh, silly situation that we pray God can be. And if it is not controlled within now and when we even with the leaders of our young people, cannot be touched to say we'll continue to be in control of the situation again. All right. Uh, that's a very good one. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, actually, I just have to uh, correct that uh, name. Actually, it's yes, Mukhtar Akosh, Akoshili. Uh, Akoshili. Akoshili. Yes. Akoshili. Okay. Uh, the president of the National Youth Council of Nigeria. Most thank you so much for that view. Now, talk to us about how you are engaging with the government. Because we've seen lots of youth groups uh, visiting the president. And then, of course, uh, uh, some of the youth groups are also being asked to just... Uh, be calm for now while the federal government tries to work out all these issues. But you've seen that the protests have already started in some states and so on. So how are you working to ensure that you have, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, a direct engagement with the presidency on all of this and then faster measures to ameliorate the situation? Well, as the leader of young people, we hold to the tenets of patriotism. And that is why we have been very patient and asking our people to be patient. But the more we say that, the more uh, people get not to be having confidence in all our, uh, all our pleads. Uh, we have not had any invitation from government to the effect of to say, okay, young people, let me sit you down and even hear from you how we can uh, move this uh, situation to a, a better uh, solution. We've also not had them sitting with the National Council for Women uh, Society to say, mothers, can you come and also tell us how we can do this? You continue to say you are uh, negotiating with neighbor. When labor say they want to go on strike today, tomorrow they say they are not going on strike again. So people don't even believe on the on on the on the truthfulness of the labor um, unions. So what we are thinking now, what we are thinking is best for this situation is to bring young people on board to say, for instance, the president is trying to bring up um, a student loan. Yes, they are engaging with NANS. If you are also trying to see how we can balance the situation of hunger, insecurity, incessant violence, you bring the youth council on board and, and we have very, very intelligent set of ESCO, set of voluntary youth organizations that if we are being brought on, um, on the table, we have solutions to the problem. Of course, we give it to the government, to government for the first time, we have young people as ministers of youth. We have a lady, we have a young man who are actually doing well. But that it doesn't stop there. Everybody cannot be a minister. But we have very intelligent people that can all we have that have solution to some of these problems. So my advice to government is to have a town hall meeting. You town town hall meeting, maybe it's your political zones. What any state that some of these crises are peculiar, like North Central, you can go to Niger, like uh, Southwest, we can go to uh, Oshun, where we have the uh, the protest today. Like South, we can find. So let hear from young people and let them tell you where the shoe pinch. You cannot be in the comfort zone under the AC, and you think you know the suffering of people. No. You cannot be riding on a private jet and you think you know what the young people or what the situation of the of, of, of the country is. You cannot know. But when you bring people out, they will tell the government the truth. And I want to also advise very cordially and as a matter of urgency, let government come and make a pronouncement on the current hardship of the country. It yeah, is I mean, very the government says they've been doing that. Uh, but people also say that uh, the Youth Council of Nigeria is more government friendly. I mean, that's why you haven't held rallies or uh, moved in the direction of this kind of angry youths who, I mean, don't need youth leadership before they come out to protest. You see, uh, it, it's just that Youth Council are being civic and, and we, it's not that we don't know what to do. And as I said again, uh, we don't just strike but we strike when it's necessary. We are giving government one week from now. If nothing has been done, we are having a coordinated protest all over the Tadisi State and Abuja. Peaceful protest, coordinated protest to make sure that there is a, there is a proclaimment, a, a pronouncement on a way forward. We cannot be, we cannot be, we cannot be suffering and be pretending. We cannot be suffering and we pretending. We have young people that have not eaten 
from since morning till now because even where they go and get their job to do people are laying down staffs people are sacking even the the, the sme that that young people are the dominant today they don't even have money to even run it they don't have loans the, the smell down that we have today we we have not heard from them we have not yeah have but not the government will say that i mean they've been youth friendly and it's a young person who is there yes, the yes, yes, Medan, exactly, yeah. minister of youth, youth yes. young minister of state for youth young and then of course the student so, loans so what we are saying is I that mean, they have young people in those sectors but we are not sure that they have empowered them to do the needful of the do, do the needful of their office they are policies. Uh, are you they sure are those programs. young people are not lost in government? No, they are not because we know we, of course, some of them we have their, we know where they are coming from, we know their background, and we are in touch with them. But what we are saying is not, it goes beyond having somebody in a position. It also goes to you empowering that person to do what he's supposed to do. We don't know what ND is doing. We don't know what Smedan is doing, but we have somebody who we believe wants to work in that sector. Because if those people come and roll out um, some, of the, some of the policies of their office, we, we are sure that the economy will strive more. But now everything is just at a standstill. So it it's, it's calls for uh, a very serious intervention. All right. And uh, I, I, I'll also be interested to know if you, you as the National Air Council of Nigeria is engaging young parliamentarians in the House of Representatives uh, well, a few a sprinkle in the Senate too on how to actually provide a better platform to reaching out to young people. Because with the huge number of young people in the country, I mean, everybody just keeps uh, saying that with the high number of unemployed youths in the country, it looks like we're all in big trouble. So how uh, is your organization actually partnering with these lawmakers, young parliamentarians, to see how you could actually do some legislative work together and bring out bills that will be helpful to young people. Well, the last um, the last Senate and the last session of the House of Rep where we had a very robust relationship, but I'm sure they had a new uh, person managing the conference of young people in the, in those houses. We have not um, they've not invited us for talks, and uh, but we'll try and reach out to them and see into what they are doing. Of course, we have individual engagement with some of them, but not as um, a group, because of course I have, a, I have my rep, I have my senator, and intermittently I give them, we give them advice. And at our meeting, we, when we decide on some of the policy that we feel government should, should do, our members also go and get to reach out to their own you know, parliamentarians. But as a group, uh, this is also a wake up call for them to also bring young people uh, to because in youth council as you know we have coordinators in all the local government of the federation we have state chapter uh, ch uh, chapters and this is the very big tools that government can use in getting information across in getting their programs across in getting their policies across if they know what they have before wow. they lost it out all right Comrade uh, Mukhtar uh, uh, Koshile, before I let you go, I want you to, to address the issues of division within youth groups, uh, including yours, the National Youth Council of Nigeria, which has been embroiled in uh, one leadership crisis or so. I mean, it's been happening over the years. And uh, I think sometime uh, in this month, sometime last week, you also asked the suspended NYCN uh, President Sukubo yes. Saregbe to actually come out clean over the allegations against him and all of that. Uh, and so, which of the factions do you actually belong to? Well, as far as we are concerned, <laughs> we do not have a faction. I it had to before now the vice president. So, and, how did uh, we emerge? We, yes, the ESCO sat and asked the young man to come and prove some allegations that were leveled against him. We cannot be, we ca people, can, people should, should be seen not to be decent set of people. We cannot be claiming to be people, uh, leaders of young people and we are holding in our hand forgery cases. We cannot be claiming to be leaders of the young people and we are, we are holding in our hand incapacity, incapacity. We cannot have a, a president of the, of the youth that cannot engage people, that cannot engage government, that cannot have policies and programs for four years. And we cannot be leaders of youth and we say we don't want to leave, we want to be there for four years, for five years, for six years. So when, when, I, when I came in, we say we are having a six-month agenda, and we have, it, we have to do a Congress. I will be 35. If you are 35, you cannot lead youth again. We want young people to come. And the young man there is about 40-something. 
So that is actually so uh, uh, before now there was no faction, and now there also no faction. I am an acting president to set up a, a, a process for Congress. So young people around, innovative, creative, intelligent young people that we have in the country that come. So we can also contribute meaningfully to the development of this country. We and cannot, before now, I'm not sure you have even have an interface with the former president suspended. I'm not sure you even know him. But yours truly here yeah, have been with you as a guest. So we want engagement. We want young people who can stand the taste of the 21st century of discussions who can go to anywhere and represent Nigeria and you and I will be proud that this is the leader number one youth in the country and that is our advocacy. All right, we well, must thank you so much. Uh, Mukhtar Akoshi is so uh, uh, the acting uh, president, president yes. you said, of the National Youth Council of Nigeria. And uh, of course, uh, the other president uh, remains suspended, according yes. to you. Well, yes. it's left for us to ensure that the youth uh, come together and have a united front. We well, must thank you so much thank you for, for helping us to that. understand all the issues facing young people across the country, especially with the uh, uh, protests being embarked upon by some youth groups over the soaring uh, inflation across the country. And of course, the high cost of living.